Think you know everything about angels? But think again. In just a few minutes, we're going to uncover a startling truth from sacred scriptures that will upend everything you believed about these heavenly messengers. Contrary to popular belief, angels are far more than just bearers of divine messages. What if I told you their true mission, as described in Hebrews 12.22, is something beyond your wildest imagination? Welcome to another captivating episode of Bible Stories, where we delve deep into the sacred scriptures to uncover hidden truths and explore the mysteries of the spiritual realm. Today, we're embarking on an extraordinary journey that will challenge everything you thought you knew about angels. While figures like Michael and Gabriel might be familiar to you, there's so much more to discover, especially when it comes to the lesser-known and enigmatic beings like Abaddon, the angel who reigns over the bottomless pit. Have you ever wondered what roles these celestial beings truly play in God's divine plan? Or what ancient secrets are hidden within the pages of the Bible about their missions and purposes? In this episode, we'll reveal stunning insights that will forever change your perception of these heavenly messengers. But before we dive into this spiritual adventure, I want to invite you to become a part of our growing community here at Bible Stories. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on the profound truths and revelations we share each week. And don't forget to click the notification bell to stay updated on our latest content. As you watch, I encourage you to leave a comment with your thoughts and questions. Let's engage in a meaningful discussion about these fascinating celestial beings. And if you find this video enlightening, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps us spread the word. Finally, share this video with your church group, family, and friends, so they too can join in this journey of discovery and spiritual growth. Get ready for a swift and astonishing discovery that will forever change your perception of the celestial world. Stick with us as we unravel the mystery of the myriad angelic beings, countless in number, that surpass human understanding. You won't believe what we're about to reveal. There's a widespread misconception that needs to be addressed. Lately, I've noticed many sources suggesting that angels are the spirits of deceased humans returning to Earth. Let's set the record straight. According to scripture, this idea is nothing more than a myth. Angels are unique celestial beings, created by the hands of the Creator, distinct from human spirits. The book of Psalms 8.5 enlightens us by saying that humans were made a little lower than the angels, indicating our fundamental difference in essence and purpose. The celestial beings have an origin so ancient that they existed before humanity itself. Recall the story of Adam and Eve in Genesis 3.24, where a guardian angel stands at the entrance of the Garden of Eden, marking a pivotal moment in human history. As Matthew 22.30 clarifies, angels exist in a unique state, not engaging in human acts like marriage. Therefore, even before the creation of humanity, God's angels already inhabited the cosmos. Except for those who rebelled alongside Lucifer, all remained faithful, loving, and obedient to every divine command, as described in Psalms 103.20. Within the celestial host, there are fascinating hierarchies and orders. Seraphim and cherubim mentioned in Isaiah 6-2 and Psalms 81 are just a glimpse of the rich angelic tapestry. They are not confined to the celestial realm. They are also here among us, assisting humanity in all its forms, men, women, youths, and children. Indeed, the Bible can be seen as a book filled with angelic narratives, though it names only four of these beings. Among them, Lucifer, the fallen angel, holds a notorious place. 
Isaiah 14.12 recounts his tragic fall, driven by pride and rebellion against the Most High. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? This verse begins the tale of his downfall, painting a picture of ambition and defiance against divine authority. Before his fall, Lucifer was a creature of unparalleled beauty, described in Ezekiel as the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Picture a being adorned with every precious stone, an anointed cherub, perfect in all his ways from the day he was created. His mission was to reflect the glory of the Creator, a mission from which he tragically deviated. Now let's delve into the majestic figure of Michael the Archangel, known as the Chief Angel. Michael stands out in the heavenly realm, not just for his title, but also for his commanding presence and crucial role. The scriptures often present him as a prince among the celestial, a born leader in the magnificent army of divine beings. Interestingly, whenever Michael appears in the scriptures, there seems to be an imminent or ongoing battle. He is rarely mentioned in peaceful contexts, suggesting his specialization as a spiritual warrior. This archangel is not just a fighter. He is a force for celestial justice, leading battles against the forces of darkness and evil. His presence inspires courage and determination, and his skill in spiritual conflict is unmatched. Michael's role is not confined to ancient times or stories of the past. He is also a central figure in the events that, according to beliefs, will mark the end of times. His involvement in these decisive moments is frequently discussed and anticipated by those who study prophecies and eschatological narratives. Picture Michael, armed for celestial battle, his armor shining with the light of divine justice, ready to defend the good and combat the forces of evil. His image evokes not just strength and determination, but also hope, serving as a powerful reminder that in the spiritual battles of life, we are not alone. In our exploration of sacred narratives, we find in Daniel 12.1 a crucial moment where Michael, the great prince, stands up in defense of the people. This passage not only reinforces his image as a warrior, but also as a vigilant protector. The words are carefully chosen. He standeth over the sons of thy people, suggesting a role that goes beyond the battlefield, encompassing protection and care. The figure of Michael is also seen in 1 Thessalonians 4.16, where Paul describes a powerful scene, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. This imagery, in which the voice of the archangel Michael echoes as a divine call, is as grand as it is inspiring. In the book of Revelation, chapters 12, 7 to 9, we find the epic narrative of the celestial battle. Here, Michael leads the angelic forces against the devil and his followers, with pride being the sin that caused Lucifer's fall. Lucifer's pride is the very force that drives him into a fateful confrontation against the Almighty. Hardened by his arrogance, he faces off against Michael and his heavenly army, only to be defeated and cast out of heaven. The war in heaven is described in Revelation. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but they did not prevail, and there was no longer a place for them in heaven. This passage not only highlights the scale of the conflict, but also underscores the triumph of justice and divine order over rebellion and pride. Pride, this insidious force, often leads to ultimate destruction, and it is in this arena that Michael's greatness truly shines. His strength and prowess in combat are legendary. 
as demonstrated in his decisive victories over the devil. When iniquity was found in Lucifer, it was Michael who rose to confront him, leading to the devil's expulsion from heaven. One of the most striking examples of Michael's intervention occurred during a critical moment in Daniel's life. As Daniel fervently prayed for 21 days, a cosmic deadlock ensued. The Prince of Persia, a powerful and mysterious figure, opposed the angel tasked with delivering the answer to Daniel's prayers. The situation became so dire that Michael had to intervene. In Daniel 10, 12 to 13, the angel reveals to Daniel, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to humble thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me. This episode not only illustrates Michael's strength, but also his role as a liberator in celestial conflicts. Further evidence of Michael's unwavering role as God's warrior is found in Jude 1.9, where Michael rebukes the devil in the name of the Lord during the dispute over Moses' body. These narratives emphasize his position as a commander who has never lost a battle. The fact that Michael is an archangel highlights the existence of an order and hierarchy among angels. In Revelation 12, 27, 9, it was not just Michael who fought against the devil and his angels, but he led the heavenly army, reaffirming his status as their chief commander. Interestingly, as revealed in Daniel 10.13, Michael is described as one of the chief princes, indicating that there are others of similar rank in the heavenly realm. While the Bible does not provide further details about these other celestial princes, this mention opens up possibilities about the vastness and complexity of the heavenly hierarchy. In this context, the figure of the angel Gabriel emerges. If you're familiar with the Christmas story, you'll recognize Gabriel as the messenger who announced to Mary her miraculous pregnancy and the impending birth of Jesus. Gabriel is one of only two good angels explicitly named in the Bible, the other being Michael. Although sometimes referred to as an archangel, the Bible does not explicitly grant Gabriel this title, unlike Michael, who is clearly identified as such in the book of Jude. Gabriel's role is distinctly different from that of Michael. While Michael is often associated with battles and confrontations, Gabriel is the bearer of good news, a messenger of hope and divine revelation. He also appears in the story of Zechariah the priest, bringing the joyous news of the conception of John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus. Gabriel's role in delivering messages of great importance and joy serves as a reminder that angels have varied and significant roles in biblical narratives. One memorable day, as narrated in Luke 1, Zechariah entered the temple to perform his priestly duties. In a moment of deep reverence and tranquility, he had an encounter that would change his life forever. In verse 11, an angel of the Lord suddenly appears, radiating a divine presence, standing to the right of the altar of incense. This angel is none other than Gabriel, the bearer of good news. Gabriel, with his heavenly presence, delivers a startling message to Zechariah. Despite her advanced age, his wife Elizabeth would give birth to a son. Zechariah's reaction, a mixture of doubt and incredulity, is understandable, as he questions in verse 18, How can I be sure of this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. Gabriel's response in verse 19 is both firm and mysterious. I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, 
you will be silent and unable to speak until the day this happens. This exchange between Zechariah and Gabriel carries deep significance. It's not merely a display of divine power, but also a lesson in faith and trust in divine promises. Zechariah's temporary muteness serves as a physical sign of the certainty of Gabriel's words and the divine will. Gabriel, the heavenly messenger, plays a vital role in key moments of the biblical narrative. His appearance to Mary, the future mother of Jesus, is one of the most celebrated events in Luke 1 31 Gabriel greets her with words that have echoed through history. Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Behold, you will conceive and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. This message not only heralds a miracle, but also marks a turning point in human history. Gabriel is also the divine figure who appears to Joseph, Mary's betrothed, in Luke 1.26, reassuring him that Mary's conception is the work of the Holy Spirit, a divine and transcendent event. Contrary to the popular portrayal of Gabriel as a gentle and almost childlike angel, the scriptures present a much more imposing figure. Each encounter with Gabriel is met with reverence and sacred awe. When he appears to Zechariah, the impact is immediate and profound, as described in Luke 1.12. When Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. Similarly, Mary is visibly disturbed when Gabriel approaches her, as described in Luke 1.29. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. In Daniel 8.17, when Gabriel comes near, Daniel's reaction is intense. Will you pass up this opportunity, or will you dive head first into this spiritual adventure with us? Subscribe to our channel now, and don't forget to leave a comment and a like. Each video we release is a key to unlocking ancient secrets, offering insights and wisdom that can transform your life. Don't miss out on this chance. As we wrap up today's exploration of the mysterious and powerful angels like Abaddon, Michael, and Gabriel, I hope you've been inspired to dig deeper into the rich tapestry of the Bible's teachings. These celestial beings, with their diverse roles and profound impact, remind us of the vastness and complexity of God's creation. They are not just messengers. They are warriors, protectors, and rulers in the spiritual realm, each playing a crucial part in the divine order. If this journey has opened your eyes to new insights or sparked your curiosity, I encourage you to continue exploring with us here at Bible Stories. There's always more to uncover, and we're here to guide you through every step of this spiritual adventure. Before you go, make sure you're subscribed to our channel so you don't miss any of the powerful stories and revelations we share. If you found value in today's video, please give it a like, it really helps our community grow. And don't forget to share this with your church group, family, and friends. Together, we can spread the wisdom of the scriptures far and wide. Thank you for being part of this journey. Until next time, may you continue to find strength, peace, and wisdom in the divine stories that shape our faith. These stories reveal Gabriel's true nature, not just as a messenger, but as an ambassador of the divine, whose powerful presence inspires both fear and admiration. Each appearance is a moment of revelation, offering a glimpse into the grandeur and mystery that surrounds God's messengers. As we explore the angelic narratives in the Bible, we encounter a more enigmatic and lesser-known figure, Abaddon, also known as Apollyon. This angel, whose name is steeped in mystery, appears in the Book of Revelation, a text rich with symbolism and prophetic visions. Abaddon is mentioned in Revelation 9.11. They had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek 
he has the name Apollyon. This passage reveals that Abaddon is not merely an angel, but also a king, ruling over a swarm of locusts that emerge from the abyss. Scholars and theologians debate the exact identity of Abaddon. While some associate him with Satan himself, a more likely interpretation, based on Ephesians 6.12, is that he is one of the princes or powers operating under Satan's authority. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Abaddon, therefore, could be one of these powerful spiritual entities. The name Abaddon, meaning destroying angel, is evocative and symbolic portraying him as a figure of immense power and destruction, the angel who governs the bottomless pit, a shadowy and ominous realm, oversees the abyss where, according to scripture, the devil will one day be imprisoned. Abaddon rules over the locusts that will rise from this abyss in the final days, painting a powerful and terrifying image. As we contemplate the figure of Abaddon, we're prompted to consider the various roles and functions of angels in the Bible. Abaddon, with his mysterious and formidable presence, represents a darker and more complex aspect of the spiritual realm, serving as a counterbalance to well-known angels like Michael and Gabriel. But trust me, this is only the beginning. Now I challenge you, don't just skim the surface. There's a vast ocean of knowledge and revelations waiting for you, and it's just a click away.